Hey everyone, I am your fave nurse B. Thanks for coming back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the care that you have to give to your patient who has a Foley catheter. This video is for pre-CNAs, CNA students, uh, new CNAs, old CNAs, people who are in nursing school, you just graduated from nursing school. This is for you. It's going to help you with giving that direct patient care as well as it's going to help you when it comes to NCLEX. It's going to help you in fundamentals of nursing. Comment down below if you want to add anything to this list. But I'm just going to give you an overview of what it's like to care for a patient with a Foley catheter. What it means, things you need to look out for, things you need to know to have the best outcomes for your patient. So when a person has a Foley catheter, what is that? Basically, it's when a tube is inserted into a person's urethra in order to collect urine for that patient. Now, a patient could be using a Foley catheter for a number of reasons. Perhaps they're unable to void, void meaning urinate. Um, urination is also called elimination. So they're unable to do that on their own. So the, the Foley catheter is going to help them to be able to get that urine out of their body. It could even be that the patient has a wound on their bottom and the doctor and the nurses are concerned that any urine that that person has, so say they're incontinent, meaning that they're unable to know when they have to use the restroom or they're unable to get to the restroom in time. So they void or eliminate on themselves in a brief, in a diaper, whatever you want to call it, that person is incontinent. So when a person has a wound on their bottom, we want to avoid getting any of that urine on their bottom. So a doctor might order for that patient to have a Foley catheter for a short amount of time until we're able to heal that wound. There's a number of reasons why. So what you need to know as a CNA or as a nurse or a nursing student is that the number one thing that we want to have as a patient outcome, meaning what do we want to happen for this patient? What is the optimal thing that we want to have for this patient, the patient with the Foley catheter? You want to make sure that you reduce the incidence or the occurrence of an infection. Anytime a foreign object is placed into a person's body, that person is prone to an infection. It's something foreign, your body's not used to it. There's things from the outside of your body that is now being put into the inside of your body. You are a risk for infection. It is your job to make sure you reduce the risk for infection to your patient as much as possible, as much as possible. When a person gets a UTI or urinary tract infection, bladder infection, when they get that, they have to get put on antibiotics. You have to make sure the patient is compliant with taking the antibiotics for a certain amount of time. If they're in an institution like a nursing home, you have to make sure that the nurses or the CMTs are actually giving the patient the antibiotic at the times and the days they're supposed to get it. And then on top of that, over time, if a person keeps getting a UTI, keeps getting a bladder infection, that person might get what we call a antibiotic resistant infection, meaning it's to the point where no matter what we give this patient, we cannot kill off this infection that they're having, this bug, this bacteria that they have. You don't want it to get to that, that part because there's so many things that come with your patient having infections, especially when we get into the older geriatric patients. There's so many things that happen when they get the infection that it's just like, you know what, it's better to just do these things that we're going to talk about to help you prevent your patient from getting an infection. First thing you need to know as far as prevention of infections is that you must clean your patient around the Foley catheter. You must clean the patient around that Foley catheter. So I was a CNA before I became a nurse and I remember some people would think if a person has a Foley, then you basically don't even really have to change them. Just keep the same brief on them all day, every day. If, as long as they're not wet, as long as they didn't have a BM, they're good. The thing is, is like anytime you have something in your body, like I said, there can be bacteria just building up along that catheter waiting to get in. So you need to get in there and you need to clean your patient. Yes, you need to get in there, clean your patient, clean around that tube. You have to try to keep that area as clean as possible. Okay, put on a clean brief because bacteria, microorganisms, organisms, they want to live on that brief so they can get into that patient and start, you know, colonizing. You don't want that. Change your patient, clean around the area. 
This is especially the case if you have a patient that is uncircumcised. So I remember I was a brand new nurse. I was about to give a patient a catheter. It wasn't a Foley. It was what we call a straight cath, meaning I just needed to put the tube in, collect the urine from that person's bladder, release any type of urine in their bladder because that person wasn't going, and then send that specimen off to the lab to get it tested. I was in there about to give it, I pull back the person's foreskin because when you do a straight catheter or any type of catheter, you have to cleanse the area. Yeah, I about threw up in my mouth. I know it's horrible because you know I'm a nurse and I wanna be respectful to my patients, but it was so much disgusting like build up around this person's, you know, area that I was just like, there's no way that people are cleaning their patients. Like, why? What is this chunky, grayish, gross? Like, there's no wonder we need to get, uh, <laughs> we need to send this all to the lab because we think they have an infection. Yeah, because there's a lot of stuff happening here. When your patient, this is just another separate video, but you must make sure that you cleanse a patient who has foreskin. Clean that area, especially if they you're using a catheter. Clean that area, and of course pull the foreskin back up. I'm sorry if that was a little graphic, but hey, this is a nursing channel. Let's get on to the next tip. Next is that you want to make sure that you change the drainage bag. So if you all don't know anything about catheters and all that, like I said, it's placed into the person's urethra and there's a tube that goes from the, ure from the catheter, there's a tube that goes into some type of bag, some type of receptacle. Now it's two things. Either it could be a bag that you would then attach to that person's thigh and it collects the urine. It's a smaller bag. It's something that patients use when they're out walking around living their life. And then there's a bigger bag that we take and we um, connect them to that bigger bag at nighttime. So, and we just hang it on the side of their bed and it collects the urine throughout the night. What people, some people do is that they don't even put on the leg bag. They'll feed the tube through the person's pants and they allow the leg bag to then drape from that person's pants into a privacy bag. So the privacy bag can be attached to a patient's wheelchair and you put the catheter bag, the drainage bag inside of that privacy bag because you don't want to be rolling around in your wheelchair going to dinner and people are seeing that you have a urine bag like underneath your wheelchair and there's urine in it. people can see it like no you need to have a privacy bag for that patient always make sure that your patients who have Foley catheters that they have a privacy bag on their bed because what if some, a guest comes in and they're laying in bed you they again you, you don't want to see that urine sitting there um, they have it there and then also they have it on their wheelchair. Every facility, every institution is different as far as what their policies are. But I just feel like if you can get a privacy bag for them, get it for them. It's a part of dignity and nobody wants to, you know, see that. You also want to make sure that you're changing the bags. So if a person is up and mobile, there's no reason that they should have one of those big drainage bags they're carrying around with them to go somewhere no put a leg bag on them if it's time for that person to go to bed take the leg bag off clean the leg bag which is a whole nother thing but you have to clean it you have to rinse it out um, with water clean it let it hang and dry in the bathroom somewhere and then put them on the larger bag do that okay you have to do these things you want to make sure you clean just water you can just run it underneath some water fill it up with water and then drain it out like as if you the area where it fills up with urine you use that same area to fill up with water and then you drain it out the other side to get it out clean it out let it hang on like the towel rack or something like that in the patient's bathroom or put it in a plastic bag hanging up in the in the patient's bathroom for the morning if you are the nurse or the cna you may want to use some alcohol swabs to clean off the port because there's going to be a port on the actual Foley, and there's going to be a port on the tubing or the cord or the bag that's collecting the urine. Clean around that port and then clean, get a different alcohol swab and clean around that port. Connect it. That way it's a lot cleaner. Um, but like I said, every facility has their own policy and evidence based practice, meaning the practices that we use that say, hey, this worked this year when it came to Foley's. This works this year. Evidence-based practice always changes. So make sure that you're up to date on that for your facility, for your school, all that jazz for NCLEX. But there should be some type of way of you to clean it 
um, before you attach or detach it from something, okay? Does that make sense? Let me know, I hope it does. Make sure that you keep in mind and you record what that person's output means. The output just means whatever the amount comes out of your body. Input is like say I take in 200 mLs of water, I should be outputting 200 mLs of water. So you wanna make sure you're keeping the correct data on that because more than likely as a CNA, they expect you to chart how much output your patient is having if they have a catheter. For my nurses, my future nurses out there, you must understand that um, a person's output is very important because you can see this person might be putting out a whole bunch of urine and that might be something that you need to let the doctor know because the more urine you put out, you're losing electrolytes. There's other things that could be happening to your patients. And, and if you're putting out less than normal outputs, then that might be also a red flag to the MD too. So make sure you're just keeping up with that. Make sure your CNAs are understanding that they have to record the output for the patients. And, and if you're a CNA and you feel like, okay, the person went the whole day and they only let out 200 mLs for the whole day, that's not a lot. 200 mLs is like, like a very small amount um, of liquid. So you probably have to be like, you know, she's been drinking pretty well and she only put out 200 mLs today. Like, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Let your nurse know because um, it's very helpful, like I said, to give us a bigger picture of what's going on with the patient. Now, this is one of the big things. This is something that I see a lot, and this is so easy to fix. But say this is your little patient. Yes, we have a little, I guess it's a kitty cat because I have two toddlers, and this is the type of stuff we have around the house. So say this is their Foley, right, coming off of them. What, a, what people will do is, which I don't get why they do it, say your patient is laying in bed. What they'll do is I'll be trying to, you know, get the person together and the this is the tubing with full of urine that's supposed to be draining out. They'll have the bag like right next to the person and it'll be like a loop in it like this versus having the patient laying in bed and having the tubing drape as far as way as you can, but you still want to leave a little bit of, um, you know, space because what if your patient rolls over you don't want them to, you know, dislodge it and you don't want the Foley catheter to come out of the patient, right? So you want to give them a little bit of give, but you want it to be as far away as you can from that patient so that it actually drains out. So it actually drains out of the patient. When you have all these big loops in it, once it gets to about like this crook right there, the urine is not going to be able to flow into the urine collection bag. So it's similar to you having a straw, the tubing is. Um, the tubing is like this. So when it comes, say there's liquid coming out of this straw, as soon as you bend it, there's any kinks or loops, it's like you're bending the straw. So of course you know once you bend that straw and you're trying to drink something out of it, it's not going to be able to make its way out of here. It's the same. This is connected to your patient and this is connected to the uh, bag that's supposed to be collecting urine. Once it gets to that big loop, it's not going to be able to come out and go into the urine collection bag. So what can happen is this urine has to go somewhere. If the patient is drinking, if they drank that day, their body is going to excrete urine. What's going to happen is it's gonna, you're going to have something called backflow. That urine is going to try to come out. It's not going to be able to go out this way. It's going to have to go back back it's going to back up into that person's bladder which can cause further bladder and or kidney damage to your patient or what can happen is since we have this kink it's going to the urine is going to try to come out but it's not going to be able to so instead it's going to go around the foley catheter this is why you'll have a patient who is who has a foley their brief their underwear is supposed to be dry but yet and still it's wet if this happens, you're a CNA, you must report this to the nurse. This is not normal for patients who have a Foley catheter, as opposed to collect urine. And instead of it collecting urine, it's all the urine is going into the brief. That's not normal. So it's usually positional. You see this a lot, once again, in the demonstration I just showed you, or you'll see it in patients if they have a Foley catheter and they're up, like they're up going places. And they're usually it's patients who might be obese or just patients in general who are sitting in a chair and it might be kinked because the tubing, say they have on their pants and the tubing is on, they're sitting up in their chair. This tubing 
could easily be kinked kind of in their pants or in their brief. So it's backing up back into the, you know, the brief is backing up and it's flowing around the Foley. So it's important when you are positioning the patients, putting them in their chairs to try your best to let that catheter flow, that tubing to flow out as straight as possible so that it can then flow into the drainage bag. Does that make sense? When something is draining, it has to drain by gravity. What some people will do is once, like I said earlier, they'll be laying in bed or something and this bag will be like in an area that's not good for the patient. So it'll be like up here. Somehow it'll be positioned so that it's above the patient. That can happen. I've seen people, they put people in chairs and they'll hang the freaking bag like on the side of the patient like this. Not in any type of privacy bag. I don't know why they do that. And I'm like, no, that needs to drain. Gravity needs to flow it because how is how is gravity gonna flow that urine out of the bag, out of the tubing into the bag if it's right here? It's not gonna work, right? It's not gonna be able to come up. It's not the urine's not gonna go around up this loop and move up. No, it's gonna flow by gravity. It's gonna flow down. So always make sure that the drainage bag is below the patient okay it's at a lower position than the patient and you might get this question on your cna exit exam or on nclex it's one of those questions or fundamentals of nursing it's one of those questions that come up all the time so you must understand that it's just gravity do you all have any questions make sure you put them in the comment section add to this list if you're a cna you're a nursing student you're done with nursing school Go ahead and add to this list. Let me know if you've seen some things or you know some things that I did not talk about. Help everybody out. Be a part of the community. Let us know in the comments section. And I just want to leave you all with this. Remember that our biggest task with a patient that has a Foley catheter is to reduce the incidence of infection. We want to keep our patients safe and we want to make sure that this foreign object that's being placed into their body is as clean as possible. That's that. Let me know if you all want to see more videos like this. And if you have other topics that you want me to go over in this video series, make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to be giving out more videos for CNAs and nursing students. So thanks again for watching you all. Peace.